are the Schwann cells comprising the myelin sheath. Round about the motor neuron axon. The motor end plates to transmit the information into the muscle. Just the same as the diagram we generated, but sometimes useful to look at it from another person's impression. Here we have the sensor in your own. And this time, remember things are the other way around. The impulse is generated in the peripheral receptors here. Carried along the, what will this fibre be called? It's carrying information towards the cell body, isn't it? Therefore it's referred to as a dendrite. Information goes to the cell body. And leaves the cell body via the axon. Enters the spinal cord via the back root, via the dorsal nerve root, to transmit its information into the central nervous system. Again, you can see the nuclei of the Swan cells because they're all independent cells. Surrounding, protecting, nourishing, facilitating saltatory conduction. All the parts that we drew on our own diagram. And again, the direction of impulse in this way. Now here's another diagram of a reflex arc. Here we see a thumb <coughs> being stabbed by a pin that causing pain, that pain being detected in peripheral sensory receptors, and the dendrite of the sensory neuron carrying that information towards the spinal cord. A nerve arriving here dividing into two, into the dorsal nerve that goes into the back, so we know this is the back of the spinal cord. We know this is the front. So the information arriving here, going along the dendrite, and can you see the cell body here of the sensory neuron? That information being carried into the central nervous system, picked up here, by the cell body of the relay neuron. So this here is the relay neuron. The relay neuron synapsing with the cell body of the motor neuron. The cell body of the motor neuron generating a nerve impulse which is carried out of the central nervous system via the axon of the motor neuron to a muscle where it will bring about contraction. Withdrawing the thumb from the painful stimuli. And just one final diagram illustrates this in some more anatomical detail. This shows a different sort of uh, 
receptor, but nevertheless this is a receptor. I think this is a muscle stretch receptor actually. Again, the information going into the spinal cord via the sensory neuron. Now, it might be a little bit unclear, so let's just label this a bit, This, draw this. This is the spinal cord here. And the outside part of the spinal cord is composed of white matter. The inside part is composed of grey matter. So the impulse arriving via the back nerve root, via the posterior or the dorsal nerve root, into the spinal cord, going across the spinal cord, and out again to a muscle. This diagram also shows the spinal canal that surrounds the spinal cord, which will contain a fluid to stop it from being damaged. And this here is the body of the vertebrae, the bones of the spinal column, which are supporting the body but also protecting the delicate nervous tissue of the spinal cord. So that diagram just gives us a little more detail. So what we've looked at so far in the first part of this talk to introduce the nervous system is the nature of a motor neuron and its components, the nature of a sensory neuron and its components, and the nature of the reflex arc the neurons that comprise it and its basic function. In this part we're going to look at how the nerve impulse is, is transmitted. So we'll call it nerve impulse transmission. nerve impulse transmission and the first thing we're going to look at is how a nerve impulse is transmitted in a nerve fibre. Now if we imagine this is the length of nerve fibre now we've said that a nerve impulse is an electrical event. Now when a nerve fibre is at rest there's a charge inside the fibre an electrical charge and this is a negative charge. So there's an electrically negative charge inside the nerve fibre when it's at rest. Just like there's a negative pole on a battery, there's a negative pole inside the nerve fibre. Outside the charge is relatively positive. So a negative charge inside and a positive charge outside when the nerve fibre is at rest. This is referred to as the resting potential. The resting potential. And the difference between here and here approximately is about 70 millivolts. 70 thousandths of a volt. So it is a voltage, it is a measurable potential difference that's referred to as the resting potential. And when the cell is in this state of being, let's just draw a section of cell here, when it's negative inside and positive outside, we say that it is polarised. is in a state of polarisation. Now, <clears throat> where there is actually a nerve impulse travelling at the time, this polarity reverses. 